Hi, everyone. Hello. I assume you guys can see the screen. If not, well, if you can, let, can someone let me know. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah, yeah we, we, we can see the screen. Okay, thanks. All right, we're going to give everyone about one more minute. Okay, let's get started. This is uh, the December 6th ORAN uh, integration meeting. Uh, what I currently have is uh, four items on the agenda. Uh, one is uh, to review the previous minutes. The second one is maybe some information that you might not be aware of, but I thought was uh, good information for the team to know um, about some uh, modeling work that the, that the Working Group 4 uh, modeling team has, has, is in the process of doing. Um, and then uh, we got some user stories uh, that uh, we got ready for the team to uh, to review. Uh, I'm waiting on Alexis, who said he might be he's going to be late. So when we get to that, we need Alexis to lead us through that. So there's three user stories that are done. Uh, you remember we have a number of st user stories that are still in process, um, and then we need to discuss some of this. Um, uh, staffing for the uh, for the SMO for the next um, the next stage the development stage for this thing. Is there any other items on the agenda that that someone wants to add? All right, I don't see any hands raised. Or <clears throat> yeah, chat. not nothing to add, Tim. But uh, thanks for bringing that uh, item for information. I wasn't aware about the information. Um, or the data model discussions that are happening. Is it still under review or has that yeah, been? I, I, let me finish, let me get to that point. And I'll, I'll, okay. I, got, I, I actually got a show of it. So with, with actually <laughs> with you in mind, Alok, you know, I was like, oh, Alok needs to know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I started going through the document itself and yeah, it's pretty good and quite comprehensive. Yeah. So thanks for bringing yeah. up. Sure. All right, so any other uh, agenda items that people wanna add? Okay. All right, so uh, so the November 29th meeting minutes, uh, again, um, you know, I, I do my best, but probably feel miserably. Uh, here's what we discussed uh, in, with the um, with my notes that I had. Uh, if there's other things that the notes aren't correct, you know, uh, you can certainly modify them here. But I'm asking if we can go ahead and agree to and approve these uh, notes. That we uh, that we took for the November twenty ninth. Okay. Uh, I uh, one see... one point, uh, Tim. I mean, from a following up from the last uh, meeting, I had uh, kind of had one comment uh, on Slack, I, and there's no discussion on that. So probably uh, wanted to kind of see if people had any opinion on that. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Let's add that as an agenda item, if you want, uh, to this. Sure. To today, right? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, sure, it'd be good. Um, discuss, and I don't know what it is yet. You'll tell me. <laughs> agenda item. <laughs> item. So, yeah, yeah it, it was basically, uh, su the suggestion was to uh, to kind of uh, rename the, um, what did we call it as, the southbound API adapter to something to reflect uh, the fact that it will be driven by vendor plugins or some operators. All right, so I'm just going to put it as a, the agenda item. 
uh, southbound yeah. adapter, right? And we'll give you five minutes. Yeah. Or, do you think uh, you need more yeah. than that? No, 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 it should be fine. I think, uh, I, I think I, I kind okay. of, people might have read the comment on Slack, so. Okay, so yeah. I'll actually do that before Alexis gets in um, to do that, because I think we're waiting on him. Okay, um, so any objections to approving the November 29th minutes? Okay, I'll mark those approved. Um, now, as, as I was saying, just some information, you might want to, uh, the working group four team has gone to this um, uh, and, and has started the process of trying to figure out how we document our models. Uh, and I think what they, they you know, they, they for, for various purposes, there's a presentation on that, on that slide. What do we want to use modeling for? But what Tal had done was he actually went back and looked at the GitHub uh, piece of it, uh, the, the actual deployment in GitHub, and uh, looked through all the CRDs that were, were in there and started pulling them out and creating uh, what I thought was a nice, I don't care how it gets documented, whether it's plant UML or UML, I don't care, but it has a nice document based upon his conventions, right, uh, of the different uh, groups of uh, CRDs from topology, uh, to and it shows you know what's multi instance and what what is uh, contained, what is related. Uh, so it it gives a good overview of, of just all the different objects that right that is necessary to make uh, Nephio go, <laughs> to, to use a better term, right. And so these are things that that you would be uh, if you're doing development within Nephio, you would want to be intimately um, uh, aware of uh, and knowledgeable in. Uh, to that, to that regard, right? And so it talks about workflows as well, the end of deployments and stuff like that. And what I'm suggesting to the group is, is that you do look at this, um, gets to the infrastructure stuff that I was talking to a lot was like, going, oh, he needs to see this because in ORAN, they're actually working on an information model that, um, that I would hope would be adaptable and minimally uh, to uh, what the work that Nephio is doing, right? Um, and so uh, it goes through all these, right? And I'm not sure what the landscape is just yet, um, but anyway. Um, so this is the existing model. So so it actually was making, uh, it was it was looking good. I asked how, as I was reviewing this, I made a couple comments because I was worried about one or two things on it. Uh, but I asked how, I said, you know, uh, when reviewing this model, because I'm going to ask you all to review the model, when reviewing this model, is there anything um, that uh, specifically what you want to want us to try to comment on? What's important to them, right? Um, and and so Tao's response is this, and I'll just I'll, I'll just put this response back to here, right? Um, is that he says, you know, you can comment on anything that's important to you. Um, he just starting to analyze the model. That's the purpose for bringing that thing out, right? Um, uh, so it's asking questions about duplication, separation concerns, you know, that whole business of what they're trying to do with the modeling effort. Uh, uh, so it's also missing some explanations. But if you find, you know, any particular mistakes in there, my point is just go ahead and from what I get from Tao is just go ahead and comment of what's of interest to you. So if you got questions or uh, you see something to be incorrect, you can you can modify or, or you can comment on it. Uh, and then they can take that in, right? Because again, what he did was he went through uh, the GitHub uh, aspects, um, and you know some of the some of the relationships or some of the constraints may very well be in the Go, not in the CRDs themselves. So um, uh, the associated code and not in the CRD itself. So uh, there might be some stuff that's missing that maybe you can add some value to. So. I really do recommend that you do look at this. Uh, it's a it's an enlightening uh, model that uh, shows how uh, kind of the the CRDs kind of fit together. So, any questions on that? Uh, Alok, you got your hand raised. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, sure. So, I'll I'll start reviewing um, more closely the document. Uh, I didn't saw the comments now when you are scrolling through i saw a couple of them that you had posted so i'm assuming it's still uh open for review and uh, they are being discussing yeah uh, this right, this so. is just 
Yeah, this just came out. Cal was had an action item to go out and look at what we currently have. So that's what this was, right? So they're using it, I would suspect, as as a starting point for the modeling piece. And so it would just came out today. So right. uh, they're very they're very open to receiving comments back. Yeah, and all these boxes and the various different, I would say, components or yeah, the entities, right? They are all within the management or workload cluster within O Cloud. Or uh, yes, they're all well O Cloud. So careful now. You're yeah, talking about I mean, the O RAN concept. Yeah. Right? So this, <laughs> like so again, the... this is these are Nepio uh, constructs, right? That uh, are used to. Uh, to uh, document the CRs, right? That'll be in the O Cloud, but it's also mm -hmm. used as part of the as it as it travels down the path, right? You know, there's injection points and everything else. So um, I don't know uh, strictly if it's O Cloud. I doubt that you could strictly mm -hmm. call it O Cloud because there are also object representations that would be considered part of the SMO. Yeah. You no, know, as I mean, it, I mean as the it reason. Journey. Yeah, the reason I was asking uh, is like. You are well aware about the information model discussions happening in the ORAN, and there we are, like, kind of building some sort of a holistic view where we have the O Cloud node cluster. Then it has the entities like the network fabric uh, and site network, and how it has to be provisioned and orchestrated. But here, I believe it's more related to the Kubernetes cluster and what are the different entities that exist within that, whether it is a workload cluster or a management cluster. Yeah, yeah, but again, it's, you know, you, you specifically talked about O Cloud, right? I mean, the ultimately, ultimately, the end, uh, the end hosting place of it, that when it finally rests, right, uh, is, a, is an O Cloud, uh, uh, either the manage the management cluster or the uh, the workload cluster. If that makes sense, right? Okay. But I mean, it's going to start just like it starts in, starts its deployment in the NF, uh, in the SMO, right? You know? Yeah. Gets, okay. Gets I'll review and then yeah, I'll I'll add some comments, especially around the infrastructure section. I do have some comments for for the clarification. But thanks for the point. Yeah, but I yeah, and I would I would certainly look at that documents, you know, as you go through it and, and ask. You know, just the questions because you have to kind of understand the, you know, the the flow of how they're using the CRs, right? You know, particularly as the injector point to look. Okay, uh, Robbie. Hey Tim, um, is there any scope for? Is it like scope for R one, R two? Is there anything like that? Um, because there are uh, many now CRs, this right? is this is all what he did currently, right? So my assumption is you could ask that question. Uh, my assumption is, is that he took the the R2, what they're working on, right? Because he just pulled it from GitHub. You can see where he pulled it from. Okay. Got it. Okay. So because I saw net net topology CR, there's been discussions since R1 and R2 too. But there are many other ones too. I mean, there's all those package variant, package variant sets and all that. So um, I'm just thinking, is this one document to include everything? Uh, or is it like You could ask him that question. Right? You can ask him that question, Robbie. Yeah, that's a good point. I do not quite sure how they're doing that piece of it, right? So, oh, oh, oh no problem. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. No issue. Yeah. I'll go again. I get, again, it just came out. I go, oh, this could be some good stuff for people to understand context, right? Right. Okay. okay. All right, anything else on the model? Okay, so. Let me finish the um, the comment does have. One, two, three. Okay. And comment. Down. All right. Um, so the next one that we're talking about is the user stories and I'm hoping Alexis is, oh, I'm sorry. We're gonna talk about the Slack item. So good. Um, oh, Seishu, you're on too. So Ravi, Seishu, uh, the other point that now I see Seishu that you're on, 
Um, uh, could I add an agenda item? I just want to make sure that you guys are synced up on um, the user stories. So I'm going to just step back real quick, guys, and, and note, uh, you know, again, we've got these six user stories. Uh, we've got three of them complete and three, oh, without, someone did some work. My man, Sager. All right. There's some that look like they're in progress uh, and some that are still need to be started. Uh, so, uh, Seishu, could you could you uh, talk about, and Ravi, talk about how you guys want to handle the uh, deploy the NFF with, with the SMO? I know that you guys got um, some coordination issues. So, say, Ravi. Yeah, yeah. No, for my end, I mean, that, that, that I've, I've been trying to reach. Uh, I mean, that you know, the Slack uh, message that I had, where you were also included, Tim. But I'm not sure if Sishu is is he has He's access on. to Slack or not. Yeah. So, I, I don't have any other way to uh, reach reach out to him. So, yeah. I mean, he. Yeah, he I I'm sorry, actually, I've been on and off uh, last whole week. In fact, today also, I'm supposed to be off. I just got the mail from Tim, so I joined here. Um, I am not a Slack guy. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yes, I, I told you my Slack doesn't work for some reason. Um, I have, uh, uh, I mean, I, I can uh, open up the WhatsApp. Uh, Ravi, do you use WhatsApp? I do, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I so uh, I, I'll, right, I'll pick yes, you my number and we can actually connect on WhatsApp. Slack, for some strange reason, I don't, again, apologies, guys, I'll try to fix it. But for some strange reason, I was showing the same to Tim also when we were face-to-face. For some strange reason, Slack doesn't work for me, actually. I mean, uh, I don't know whether it's an app problem or my phone problem or even I, I even changed the phone, but somehow it doesn't work. But sure, I, I'll I'll uh, uh, give you my number. I'll I'll just put that in a, in this thing here and we can kind of cover the WhatsApp. That should be really fine, Ravi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the only issue is that I'm driving right now. <laughs> I can't actually. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll text you. I mean, I'm but, saying I'll, I'll put it on, on, on your email, actually. You'll have it in next... Uh, uh, a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. email but, it to me. That's yeah, but guys, see. the reason why I sent the email was to make sure, because I wasn't sure, you know, about the Slack situation. That's why I sent the email to you, also to you, Robbie, to your Gmail account, right? So, um, oh, okay. uh, my, I didn't see that yet. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah. No, that's okay. That, I just just using the emails right here. So, um, the the point is, is that Seishu and Robbie um, and Sager, I believe, were the three. Um, we're uh, working on uh, this particular uh, uh, use case that we need to get filled out in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, Seishu and, and Ravi, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys, you know, working sure. together to try to get this thing resolved, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, I think we should okay. have something by next call. I guess. Yeah, 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 because there, there's, a, there's a nice little template in there, Seishu. Uh, I don't think it'll be all that. <laughs> Sure. Okay. I've 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 sent you my yeah, my mobile number and the WhatsApp number actually, Ravi. So in the mail, in the same mail where Tim and Alexi are also there. So uh, a request to reach out to me if, if that's more convenient for you, and then we can surely take it on. That's not the problem. Yep. By the way, on the other side, sure. I met Sagar. I met Sagar last week uh, in the ONES uh, India. And we shared uh, a lot of ideas on how to proceed with this particular thing. So uh, we will surely have them also as part of uh, our coming up uh, our plan, both from workflow onboarding as well as um, the O-Cloud operator of it, how to do it. And also we will also talk about that. In fact, I'm trying to reach out to Alexi. I think Alexi is on leave uh, today and this week. So Tim, that part of it also is in progress. I was, I was on and off. So once Alexi is back from uh, from his vacation, I'll be able to present that also. That's also an action item which is pending from my side. Tim. No, got it. No, no problems. I'm just the poker here. So sure. <laughs> trying to get... I, I'm making sure that I have... <laughs> right. I'm making sure I, I I don't get the second question because I know that is my action item too. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Making sure, making sure when I'm there, I'm I, I I take all the responsibilities and give you the status update of it. Yeah, yeah. No okay. worries, man. I appreciate it. Thanks okay, so again, I'm still waiting. So so now, Robbie, we're back to your Slack item on Southbound. You want to uh, discuss that? So do you have a Slack yeah, item. So, on yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, I mean, the, the point is, I mean, what I had uh, kind of described in that uh, in that note on Slack. So. It was basically my comment was around calling the southbound uh, as calling it as the southbound interface adapter because we are not 
kind of kind of uh, uh, doing any adaptation on the O2 IMS uh, interface itself. So um, we, I mean, the the other alternative, any variant of that, probably is out of uh, is probably not in the context as such, right? So you want to you want to you want to hey Ravi, do me a favor, take over sharing yeah. and share what you're talking about, right? So people can get some context. Yeah. I know, but I see I'm driving. This time is really bad for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so car, what, what dro no, dropping of kids to school right now? So no, no <laughs> worries. What do you want me to show, right? So people can know what you're talking about. Uh, oh you yeah, want, I mean, if you just open up the architecture um, uh, diagram, the latest uh, one that we all okay. have, kind of. It's a, it's there. So, so yeah. So the talking... idea was that yeah. So go ahead. The, yeah, sorry. Uh, so the I mean within the um, the management cluster, and we have the, uh, the Nephew SBI adapter, right? So the reason why we have why we we called as and for the northbound interface adapter, there was the reason specific reason why we kind of um, add that function there so that you can adapt from the small APIs into the intents that will be kind of uh, um, you know developed within uh, the nephew or within the context of Fucom or NFO. So the southbound, uh, the SPI adapter, the southbound interface adapter had, I mean, we, we are not incorporating any such functions there or there's no such requirement there. It's basically just O2 IMS. Rather, what I see is that, you know, the southbound, I mean, you would be having multiple O clouds from multiple O cloud vendors and you might have, different kind of operators from these vendors to kind of invoke the O2 IMS or basically that would leverage the O2 IMS to 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 handle all the operations that uh, that is within the scope of IMS right so uh, my suggestion was to kind of instead of calling it as nephew southbound interface adapter to call it as kind of a, a, a nephew plugin or vendor plugin or to call it something else other than the southbound interface adapter because we are not doing any adaptation on the interface itself, right? So. Yeah. So this came this came from uh, both the agreement was through um, the Ericsson folks. Alaka is his hand raised. Yeah. So maybe if I can take that up. Uh, yeah. So we had contributed that and presented uh, in one of our work group two meeting. Um, I mean, I'm. I don't have any strong opinion about naming. We, like you said, Ravi, we can call it something like Nephew Southbound plugin or something. Since uh, at least how I draw in my head, the picture would look like something as a short term versus a long term view, right? So with for the short term, there will be a cloud provider, uh, cloud platform provider corresponding plugins that can be plugged in and you can actually have uh, the the provisioning related operations or, or any sort of IMS related services to be supported through that vendor specific plugins. Uh, exactly, then, that's what my right, idea is, yes. Call it probably southbound plugin should be. Yeah, uh, so good. I think it's just like we had the northbound adapter and then I think it Maybe it was copy paste, or I think we just followed the same trajectory. So, sort of but let, let, let me make sure I understand just, just real quick. So, I see Seishu's on, right? So, I'm going to ask him a question. Seishu, with OSC, with respect to the FOCOM and NFO, are these mm -hmm. going to be plugins or just simply an adapt adaptation interface? Because plugins have a connotation, right? And I just want to make sure that the actual OSC code. The intention is to have that plug-in connotation to it. See, uh, OSC tries to replicate what is coming from Oran Alliance, and uh, Oran Alliance right now gives standard interfaces for uh, the FOCOM to IMS, right? Right. So um, the adapter, the word we have used, adapter or or uh, plug-in, uh, should be in line to that the Oran Alliance uh, uh, specific. Uh, spec that comes out of that, right? Not one part of it. Yeah, I understand that is still going on. That is that is the discussion which we are having in the Nephew group. Sorry, in the Oran group. Work group one is working on service orchestration part. That is something which is there. But at least for the service BA part, which is the IMS piece, uh, is something which um, uh, Oran is actually uh, has already gone uh, way ahead. And uh, yeah, that you, part of it. But but isn't it like Oran that 
like you said, it's an alliance, it's a standardization body versus the NIFIO, we have more yeah, of a look, I was, I was implementation. Yep. I, yes, yes, yes. I'm just answering what Tim has asked me about the Oran part, Oran Alliance mm -hmm. part, right? He was talking from OAC perspective. My answer, he is actually from OAC perspective alone. Uh, look, I, yes, yeah. I understand. Uh, yeah. I, in because fact, I also I think, said this. Yeah. Hmm. The that, 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 plug -in, that, hey, yeah. I locked just a second because uh, the reason why I asked that question, right? I, I don't want to get too standard here, right? Because the source code, the implementation that we're going to use for the Nephio POC on this is from the um, from the uh, open uh, the ORAN um, software community. Software community okay? yeah. And so I want to make sure that you know when we talk about a plugin, there's a connotation for a plugin. It says, you know, a plugin's a plugin. It's gonna be a plugin, right? You know. Uh, whereas an adapter is kind of open. It's like how you want to do your stuff. And so if Seishu, if the FOCOM uh, 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 function, right, isn't a plugin type of southbound function, then I, I'd have a problem calling this a plugin because it's not a plugin. It's just an adapter, right, which is a generalization of a plugin. So help me understand if this is going to be a plugin where I actually create a plugin and I plug it in. Or is it just the general adapt adaptation player? Yeah, so, so maybe yeah. I, I can give an example, right? So FOCOM realized through some sort of a copy-based cluster, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. right? So you can have uh, a copy cluster that can have multiple sorts of, or that can support a pluggable architecture and, and that supports a pluggable architecture today. And you can have multiple different provider plugins that can be supported by that copy cluster, which is realizing the FOCOM functionality, right? And right. that's a short-term solution versus the long-term would be you have a common O2 IMS aligned plugin and all the cloud platform providers who are compliant to the ORAN architecture would support the O2 IMS plugin data model, right? The, the one which will be coming from the ORAN Alliance, right? And that will be the common uh, interoperable plugin to be used by a vendor sub supporting or providing the FOCOM functionality versus the IMS realization by some cloud provider vendor. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, what what Alok said. So the way the way it's it's going to work is that you're going to take a very high level intent, and then you're going to map those intent to certain blueprints, and those blueprints are going to point to certain southbound uh, kind of uh, implementation specific operators that's going to invoke your O2 IMS kind of function functionality. So that can be kind of coming from multiple sources from vendors or it could be a standardized implementation and so on. So in that sense, you know, I think uh, the Southbound is going to be kind of very specialized based on who 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 the 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 kind of the O cloud uh, provider is or but, but Roddy, is Roddy, Roddy, I'm not yeah. I'm not arguing with that. I'm arguing, I'm asking yeah. Stacey if the current software is a plug in plug in software, is it just an adaptation yeah. software? You know, but the current uh, software is probably not even written considering Nephew's. Um, well, Ravi, you don't right? know that. Let me ask Saishu because he's the. He's yeah, yeah, the sure, no, yeah. current is not written. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll say this way. See, it's it's following the Oran Alliance part, as I said, and Oran Alliance is actually maturing on that part of it, right? So I'll, I'll put it this way that the current thing which is coming from the INF piece of the OSC is is uh, pluggable, but it is following what or the Oran Alliance is actually talking about. Having said that, I was just talking about that before, uh, Alok, you 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 were uh, saying about this, right? So okay, so then until the Oran Alliance defines the O2 IMS enough that um, that it's mature say that it's stable right there would be a nephew southbound plugin that we would use is that accurate say you uh yeah from nephew perspective it makes sense but if you're talking about osc where we we try to adapt it i mean in the long run we want to adapt it in osc also right that's also one more thing we were talking about right uh, where 
on the panel uh, team we want to reuse this yeah. so we sure. want to see how how to make this best of it in fact this was one of the point which me and sagar also were discussing on <clears throat> on in terms of how to leverage what is there and how to take it on so surely we'll we'll uh, see uh, what can be the best uh, solution for having this set up <laughs> all right yeah for the, for the diagrams do you care if i call that a southbound plug uh, adapter plugin i think both of them uh, both of them can do the similar work right so you, what is a differentiation factor that you're talking about from a plugin to adapter a, a plug in is something that i can i i can actually just plug into a framework right an adapter you have many choices of how you do it, adaptation. It could be part of the code or whatever. I would, uh, I would call it something like GVNF and MSVNFM to be more, uh, to make it this one. Like I, I would rather say it, the generic one is actually what comes out of the system and the specific one is is something which is vendor specific, right? Something like that would be more much more sense. Um, well, if you want to call it adapter plugin, I think uh, it's up to the usage of it. Okay. I feel what comes out of the box should be more generic and specific implementation of will be out of the box, which will be the, the vendor specific. Yeah, but, or, but, but is, is that is that something that's going to get plugged into the Focom software? In other words, it's just it's just registered and, 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 uh, and plugged in as, as a potential interface of Focom. I don't want that to be standardized. That's what I'm saying. There's generic things to be standardized. The what comes no, out it's of not, Focom it's to not, be standard. Yeah, it's not it's not standardized. It's just yeah. what is the so I'm saying adapter adapter for me makes much much more sense because plugins one the moment you put plugins inside the Focom, you are actually getting into a mess of uh, multi vendors and and multiple support systems and multiple things and all right. Well, so you're going to have to get into that mess anyway. Yeah, so uh, I would rather say adapter because adapter will be at least having following a specific standard right of how how the adaptation should be. Uh, and that okay. is what even All David right. Kinsey was talking about, right? I hope it makes sense. Yeah. All right. So, Anders, you got your hand up? Yeah, I was listening a bit. Uh, it seems almost from this discussion that we have two things to describe. Uh, where this may be trying to describe the target where we have an O2MS, and we currently have an implementation which is not O2MS, and we have no adapter or in the code. That's a fair assessment. Yep. Uh, we're so dealing with reality is, here. Yeah, so, so, so maybe there should be a target picture and the current state somewhere. So if it's a current state, this would be, this would Both be, this would, oh, no, 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 because it's, because it's, if if I had to do a current state, I would call it a plugin, because okay. because eventually that that adapter will have to go away, or or that plugin would not be used. It would be the standard plugin would be used, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I was driving at. Okay, and then you would so, when you use that plugin, you would not have IMS below. You would have have a methyl flavored IMS. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I I, I get it. Right. Um, but I'm, uh, give me, give me a little grace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, instead of calling plugin, I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, jump in this, but I think adapter makes much more sense to me there because uh, you are adapting to a specific. Uh, it does thought. to me, and it gives, and it doesn't give you a specific. It doesn't say what specifically you're dealing with at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Start from an architecture. I, I, that's why I like adapter. But I mean, if if the group says make it a plugin, I was like, oh, okay. Is Robbie, the group calling you, it you, plugin? We can still call it adapter. Well, no, Rob, Bobby can... is suggesting that. No Sorry, reason Robbie. I was I, I was suggesting as a plugin is because of the heterogeneity of implementations that you might have. So then you might have different versions, different flavors of that uh, implementations. It's yeah. not necessarily that. It'll be one standardized. I mean, you could. Well, as, that as, as as Andrew said, is, long -term uh, software. that is what is Oran all about, right? We should not have so much of uh, heterogeneity. Also, at, at the entry point, at least I'm saying. Otherwise, the Focom itself will change. Uh, so I would rather say we can have a plug adapter there, and adapter can actually have an, have a way to different plugins to adapt to, right? That also is possible. Oh, and inside the Focom, okay. inside the Focom, we can have adapter. I'm saying this way that you can have adapter inside the Focom. What comes out of the Focom is adapter. And then you will write your plugins to 
to match the adapter so that you can hook to it, right? The hook should not change, isn't it, Ravi? Yeah, I mean, you could have multiple layers of software stack. I mean, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. trying to, yeah, I was trying to say okay, that, okay, so. there is a, there is a layer of heterogeneity that you... Yes, 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 I, I'm with you. So. Yeah, I'm getting it. But I'm saying if you put that within the, within the forecom as a plugin, then you are actually getting a lot of, too many yeah. flavors of those plugins. I'm saying at least what comes out of the forecom should be adapter. And then we can adapt to that using our own vendor specific. That should be mixed. All right. So we're getting really detailed into the FOCOM design that has an architectural design that we haven't done yet. So we got to be careful, guys, right? Because um, uh, I, I think that that'll, what happens will prove itself out in the design of the FOCOM. But um, Brandon, we got Brandon a lock, and then I'm going to ask for a, 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 what do we want to do next. So go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Um... In my opinion, you know, um, if not for uh, the Nephew SB adapter or if not for Nephew SB plugin, what will Focom do without that? Are there any other adapters or are there any other plugins in the South apart from this O2 IMS? You know, that's my first question. For me, Focom is always talks, you know, as per Oran Alliance, O2 IMS APIs only. So what it is adapting, you know? Yeah, so the, the, the problem the problem is that we are ahead of what the ORAN Alliance has strictly specified for O2 IMS. So we're putting a Nephio spin on this for now, right? There's some stuff the O2 IMS has done, but for stuff like cluster creation and stuff like that, guess what? They haven't defined it, right? So the use cases that we're going at. So it's going to have a Nephio spin of this that we may very well, when O2 IMS comes up, we're going to have to re, um, adjust, uh, adapt <laughs> the, the the implementation towards, right? Once that's there, right? And so now we're in this, you know, we're in the chicken and egg. And I'm just saying, give me a little grace right now with with some of this naming, right? Um, because eventually it will it will converge once the once the interface is specified. And as Seishu said was that the intention would be to get to the standard interface once it's identified, once it's specified. But a lot? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'll keep it rather quick. Uh, I think yeah, after listening to Seisha's comment, uh, I do tend to agree, I mean, with the argument that since we wanted to march towards more generic, generalized way of handling uh, and supporting the interoperability, so maybe let's keep it as SPI adapter and then adapt to what O2IMS will specify and define, right? And then answering, um, forget the previous um, uh, comment. The, 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 yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I think the, the significance of having adapter slash plugin here could be, we have the different uh, adapters or the, the the language that is being understood by the north of FOCOM versus the south of FOCOM. So there should be, but there, there needs to be some sort of an adaptation or model to model translation that has to happen between the FOCOM northbound and the southbound because they are they, they are two different interfaces. And that's why we need the adaptation layers for both then, north yeah, and the south. Right? Yeah, then what does FOCOM do? Uh, the the focom part yeah uh, there is there is one thing see the the adapter we are talking about is nephew adapter not focom adapter you're right focom only does ims the one we are talking about here is nephew adaptation uh that is a little different from the the oran spec itself so what we are talking about here is the the functionality which comes out of nephew and like tim said uh, right we have uh we are talking about the the parallel track of what Orion Lens is doing right now with respect to that. And anything that has to be done further to it, we will try to do it in Nephew. That's the whole purpose of having this. Otherwise, FOCOM actually, what FOCOM does right now as part of the standard alliance is actually it just talks to IMS. Further. Yeah, yeah. So I always believe FOCOM directly calls O to IMS. In the case of Nephew, it calls, uh, you know, through the operator way. Maybe the top. Yes, yeah. that, that yeah. operator way is actually adapted. So that's the reason why it's Nephew SB adapter. It's not Focom adapter. It's Nephew SB adapter. Okay. Okay, okay I understand. I understand. Yeah. Hence, and I'm actually what? saying it's adapter than plugin because if the moment you put plugin, it, your question becomes much more complex. So I'm saying it's adaptation right now. Yeah, then I think we are good. Okay. So, Ravi, 
So are you okay with just leaving it at this and we'll, it will get into the design. You can, you can probably make further comments in the design choices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking we want to interface adaptation. Ah, uh, you're breaking up, buddy. Interface series adaptation from the protocol. Ravi, you're breaking. Okay. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. much better. Can you better. hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, sorry, I'm this hilly areas, you know. Uh, uh, no, I was saying that uh, instead of the other uh, the concern I was having, we call it interface adaptation. We are not adapting on the interface. We want to call it just a few southbound adapter because northbound interface adaptation has a specific connotation from basically saying, okay, you want to map some protocols and stuff from to the intents. Do we do we want to still use the word interface there? Uh, because there's no adaptation happening on the interface itself. Interface is O2IMS, as I see it. <laughs> that, that was my view. Well, but the problem is that there's going to be non-standard pieces that go down the that interface right and that's the that's better nephew specific because oran has not defined the, the um for example the crate cluster that's the point right you know when we get down to it there is no crate cluster you can go into the o2 ims spec there's none there there's going to be a nephew piece of it until there's an o2 ims piece of it right so there's it is adapting the interface robbie just because the incompleteness okay. of the o2 ims okay so okay, so we are saying there are things outside O2 IMS that might also be yeah. uh, that we are, that we are trying to uh, yeah. indicate on that inter. Okay, no, I was thinking yeah. it's just O2 IMS. So okay. otherwise, out yeah. out of scope. So okay, that's fine. We're we're driving we're driving the stuff to O2 IMS and we'll adapt to it. But there's going to be stuff that goes down there that isn't because it isn't defined, right? So okay, all right. So okay, I think okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna close on that to say we're gonna keep it the same. Um, I see Alexis came in, cool, my man. Uh, so we do have we do have three um, we do have three use cases that are uh, that are available. So Alexis, do you want to take over here? I'll stop sharing. Want to take over and start talking about your use cases? We have about 15 minutes. Hey everyone. Yep. Yeah, sure. I'll. Uh... Try to be succinct. Uh, just give me one second. I, I need to open it up. Um, and first of all, thank you uh, for the comments that I received. Uh, Ravi, Alok, and some others. Much appreciated the comment. Let's make these use cases. Uh, <clears throat> um, hang on. Uh, uh, community uh, driven, right? So if if you uh, uh, a couple of comments, you'll see I replied. Uh, you know, if you have some ideas, if you have some thoughts, uh, feel free just to propose something, right? I, I don't want to be owning these user stories. It's 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 all of us owning it. So that's my first general comment. Um, so the use case is I'm gonna uh, I'm. Can you see my screen now? I assume you can. Yeah, we can see Alex. Yeah. We... Okay. Good. So the way I went to create these use cases, uh, I went the easy route. Okay, let me explain. So I looked the, or um, I looked at the um, orchestration use case document that we have within Oran, and I pretty much copy pasted the use case that is defined in there. Um, so that's why um, I, 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 I that that's some of the question that that I got were related to maybe some of that copy paste, but. Um, my goal here is to clarify a few things. So, so um, Alok, I see your your very good point about you know the discussion about cluster templates and so on. Uh, I definitely agree with that. So, if if you don't mind identifying a, a way to to make an addition, uh, please do so. That would definitely help me. Um, I definitely believe that regardless that addition, <laughs> Seek Two will define something in the format of a CRD. And we will have a way to influence more or less what is the data model of the CRD. So that's why I didn't call it out necessarily, but you're right. I think a good call out is key <clears throat> to make sure that, um, uh, and that might be as part of the requirement that we want that um, object to be called cluster template. But I think that's yeah. you know, so, something uh, good that could be added, you're right. Yeah, and just real quick, uh, I, I think we still have some design principles, right? That 
we are using for R1 and R2, like the blueprint, the blueprints and, and the specializations uh, and, and all those kind of things, and which very much aligns with the template concept we are discussing in the ORAN. Um, so I was just thinking like, maybe we can bring those, uh, the, the, the concepts that we have defined in NFU uh, and mention it in the feature overview uh, section itself. Do you I'm thinking maybe in the design and architectural, uh, sorry, architectural consideration. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's that's even better. Yeah. So, would you be willing to make these additions? I can give an attempt. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Alok. Thank you. Um, the next comment I got is from uh, Ravi, and, and so Ravi, that that's a good point um, that that you mentioned here. So. So just to recap for everyone, right? The point is about, you know, within Nephew, we have the ability to deploy a cluster across a cloud sites within an all cloud. Um, and and the, the, the working group six, right? The use case is about deploying a cluster, but it's not defined where it's going to be. So what, what my reply here, Ravi, is to say that it, it is more of, a, and, and, and I know you added a comment down here about location, when the user, when, when the request is going to be made to the IMS to create the cluster, as part of that location field in the requirements of the request, will be defined. You know what is expected, and so <clears throat> whether it's across sites or within one site doesn't really matter for the use case. We support all of the above, right? So here, that's why I'm saying the focus is really just uh, to say that Focom sends one request to IMS, and that's it. We have a, to a targeted O cloud, and then. Within the request is is the detail about uh, how that cluster should be realized. So I don't know, Ravi, if you are agreeing with this, or if you, or if there is any specific addition, or because I got your comment, but I I don't know how to change what is written here because I think it's uh, your comment is someone somewhat addressed as part of what the requirement needs to provide. Yeah. I was more from again uh, the, the you know the contract uh, where you take a blueprint and actually fan out and specialize for multiple. Ravi, you're breaking just the practice me. for me. Yeah, oh, yeah, Ravi, you're breaking a lot, so I cannot hear your. And Ravi said he's saying. driving. Alexi, Ravi said he's driving, so perhaps that uh, he's maybe in a zone okay. that is. Um, so, let's Ravi, see, let's, let's, like, let, Ravi yeah, we yeah, can iterate yeah. offline on your comment. I want to make sure we, we address it properly, but let's iterate offline if if you're breaking. That way we can uh, we can hear you better. Or we can write. Oh, am, I, am I breaking? Am I breaking now? now? You're, back. Or... you're back now. You're back now, Ravi. Okay, I'm just good. switching Wi-Fi here. So, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, my, my comment was uh, from more from the perspective of uh, of the fact that you you have uh, the nephew platform itself gives you the ability to fan out a blueprint to multiple uh, kind of um, uh, realizations, right? So, uh, and normally when we talk from an O2 IMS perspective, we are saying, okay, it's probably, I'm not sure if that's something because we have not probably gone into the stage three kind of APIs, but if something of that, uh, Kind of uh, richness is captured in that um, in that one request. So uh, this is more coming from an FEO perspective. Uh, how do we kind of you know because this use case has been defined on ORAN and in ORAN most of the times it's it's basically saying okay there's a REST API and uh, and of course it, the details are not been but when you talk about FEO because of the fact that okay you want to handle this at scale how do you kind of uh, adapt this use case for NFUs and uh, um, it was it was coming from that perspective, yeah. Now I, I haven't seen your uh, your response yet, Alexis. But uh, um, so I mean, do we want to make this a a kind of more kind of um, um, uh, the, these somewhere in this capture that okay, at the end of the day, it's going to be uh, there there are there are certain features that this in this particular intent might um, uh, a certain um, um, uh, I would say uh, what is it? Um, certain requirements that this intent might satisfy. It it is for coming from yeah. that perspective. Yeah. So so that's absolutely part of it, <clears throat> and um and, and part of this requirement 
And you you added a comment there as well about is it scoped to one or more OCloud site? Mm. And, and and that's where in the requirement we have the location. And, and what I'm saying is this is where the user is going to say, what is the location? Is it one availability zone or many, one region or many, or just one site? And so this is where I see this information being provided. OK, sure. OK. Um, so I believe yeah, it is captured yeah. as part of the intent that we, as far as the requirement that will drive the intent, I believe it's there today. Okay. No, probably we, I was thinking we could generalize it to say that this could identify, I mean, the intents could actually identify uh, instantiating clusters in multiple O cloud sites as such, right? I mean, uh, so that would but, probably probably make it more clear. Yeah. So if I quickly respond, um, sorry to cut you, Alexis. Uh, I read that comment and I was about to respond that, but yeah, got pulled into some other discussions. Uh, I think ORAN doesn't specify whether it has to be a single O cloud site cluster deployment or is it some sort of a multiple distributed O cloud node cluster deployment, right? Which spans across the multiple O cloud site. It, it, it's, it's not explicit in a sense that it says that it is for the single site versus multiple different whole cloud sites. Uh, I don't see that kind of a demarcation that has been uh, like mentioned in the um, in the ORAN spec, right? And maybe it's not needed either, right? So we will have one, like Alexis was explaining, we will have one single endpoint, that's the IMS, and let that decide whether that uh, deployment and which exact location and the location ID is to be selected for provisioning based upon the capabilities and characteristics of the available resources, the, the deployment option. So I think that's, okay. that's how I see No, but, uh, but uh, the way, I, because when you define the intent, you would probably kind of identify several kind of uh, tags to that particular intent saying that, okay, this is, this is a whole cloud instance, but I want to Kind of spawn this particular cluster in all the sites that is tagged by so and so. So no, you that, will that comes in in the yeah. high level intent. You will provide the requirements in a sense that I need so and so capabilities and characteristics, right? And then it's up to the IMS how it has to be fulfilled, whether it is fulfilled by one single low cloud site or would it require multiple different low cloud sites and. Uh, and then requirements such as latency based requirements, right? You, uh, I mean, all these will come as a set of requirements rather than um, I want to have a O cloud node cluster being deployed on this particular site or that particular site location. No, no, but I think that you will definitely have some idea of, uh, I mean, this will be kind of well planned in the sense that you Absolutely. won't be leaving yeah, it to IMS. We, uh, so yeah, before, we will when you, have when the, the topology, uh, yeah. right, in, in yeah, the yeah, SMO. Yeah. So absolutely, we will have that kind of a, uh, um, like uh, the details or, or, or the structuring in, in the SMO. But what I was after is uh, with the IMS. Guys, uh, hang, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Alex. So, so there's a thing here, right? So the IMS is the fan out point, no doubt, right? If you're going to have multiple operations. But the geographical location of where that's going, that's part of the SMO intent. So just place it here. What sites you put them on, you know, maybe maybe, maybe it's the IMS responsible for that. I don't think we've come to that conclusion, by the way. But certainly, uh, what we mean by location, right? You know, is location just simply geographical or is it saying for these specific sites, right? So I think, you know, we can go back and look at the use cases for that. But certainly, uh, the intent, you should be able to uh, mark an intent for a set of geographical uh, locations, right? Yeah, and, and I believe this is what is captured here. So um, I would say exactly put what is captured. Uh, no, I would say put a brackets there and put an S there. So it could be one location or multiple locations. That's that's where I disagree. I no, I'm okay, I'm okay with this. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with this. Sorry, that, that's what I meant, yeah. Thank you. You were Sorry, to say I was raised my hand for long. Guys, this is actually coming under homing and placement. Uh, this requirement, which, which we are talking about, is coming under homing and placement, which is one of the criteria which is being talked about even though right now it's manual, but automatic uh, intent-based homing and placement. 
when we go to that, Horan Alliance is not talking about intent driven, uh, but that is actually something which we have to feed back. Again, in line to what we were talking about sometime before, right? So uh, chicken and egg problem. So surely, I think once we have that, um, uh, the maturity of this spec coming in, uh, this will also be solved for sure. Uh, right mm -hmm. now, I'm with Alexi to have it as a placeholder and move on. Um, your point is right, Ravi, by the way, it is required to be to be thought about. So the current use case, I think we can we can still deliver it with uh, with with uh, a basic, you know, without a one network function, right, to start with. The one cluster, one network function is actually what we can start with. And as we mature, as as the Orion Alliance also matures, we can surely take that. So I'll put that under homing and placement and as as a uh, futuristic uh, addition to what we are trying to do. That will be sufficing the entire part. That's my two All cents right. on that. So yeah. Lux, do you have a, is this a response to this issue? Because if yeah. not, I'd like to respond to it. Just rather quick. Um, homing, mm -hmm. I don't think it's... It necessarily yeah. a homing and placement thing, right? Because that happens when you are deploying your NFs or the NF deployment happens. And for that, the very first condition is that the cluster should be existing, right? And which exact cluster to be selected for, for deploying uh, your, uh, look, your NFs, right? Agreed. Uh, see, homing and placement, when I'm talking about, it's also cluster creation comes into homing and placement. There are two parts of homing and placement. One is for the NFO, which is where you you find optimal subcloud to be deployed on or edge cloud to be deployed on. The other thing also is when you talk about geo-distributed uh, cloud, right? Where your subcloud should be created or your cluster should be created itself can be one as a homing and placement also. Yeah, I think so it's both a, of them. It's an after after like some sort of a operation that happens after an exception saying I didn't find a right set of resources uh, to be deploying your, your applications deep. there. Right? I'll actually give an instance of song. Hey, we have something called solid information network, right? I think it's going Jens. off the track, but we will talk about it maybe later. Yep, sure. sure. If I may, I the, the, the point here is that when there is a request coming from FOCOM to IMS, a location or a set of locations for that cluster are provided, period. That's it, right? All yeah. the rest, it's, it's not what I want to discuss just now because I have two minutes remaining. Uh, I, I don't disagree with all the discussion here. I just want to say that I think we agree with the principle that there is a, one or a set of locations for the cluster to be created. This is yeah. this is really the main goal. I think we agree. That's what with I was that, saying. Yeah. Right? We, we can go with that right now. Yes. Yes. Proceed. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think one of the other point that was brought mm -hmm. up, and it's it's a good point, is um, I think in the users template story is, is captured the notion of personas. Um, and Alok was asking, you know, is this something defined somewhere? I believe seek to try to define them, but they're not, I don't know where they stand. Um, so do we want to keep persona as part of the user story or should we remove them? I think that's that's the answer that I'm looking for now. I don't mind keeping them or removing them. Both is fine for me. I can't say for sure what is the exact definition of persona, although I know there are a couple of personas that seek to is using. Okay, silence is consensus. We keep them. <laughs> <laughs> I would vote to remove because if it's okay. not been defined yet, then maybe it brings more confusion than than Okay, opinion. sounds good. That yeah. that's 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 exactly why I was asking this. So uh, let me. What's this through. persona supposed to do in that? I'm sorry. I... I was well, no, it's <clears throat> it's more from a user experience standpoint, right? When someone okay. is going to look at what we're going to deliver, uh, it's trying to help the user identify, okay, is this for me? Oh, I see. Okay. So uh, I don't want to delete it. I just want to strike it through, but I, I don't know how we do strike through in this thing. Uh, give me one second. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So the other question was... Um, well, actually, it's 12, so so I don't want to go in the other question because we're timing out. Yeah, I'm um, sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it back. So give me a quick 30-second uh, summary on what you want to do next, uh, Alexis, with these three or with this so, one. Yeah. Well, with the three, actually. So people, please continue coming up with... so create, delete, and OCloud registration. The three of them has been done to a similar way using the um, ORAN orchestration use case document. 
please keep reviewing them offline. Let's try to iterate and let's try to get uh, firm up uh, by between now and next week. Um, I don't see major, uh, you know, objection in what is written right now in the comments. Uh, but please, um, if you want to have some comments between now and next week, review them and uh, and and we'll finalize these three hopefully next week. This is that is my goal, uh, Tim. Okay. All right. Cool. Any other comments before we leave, guys? I see there's a link there, Seishu. So you should be able to receive the recording link on top of the on top of the page, Seishu. Sure. Uh, you can you can okay. give me a link of that. I'll, I'll, a page link, perhaps. I'll, I'll look into that. All right. So let me copy it and paste it. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Tim. Sure. All right, guys. Anything else before? And and I I don't I don't update them. That comes from Bala. Some other ones, so they're not updated. Talk to Bala. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else, guys? All right. I will see you next uh, next week. Thanks. Good discussion. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, everyone. Good day.